perhaps not as eloquent as big song, but it's my invocation of what we call Tom Paine and the Spirit of True Democracy. And here we go. Tom Paine, born January 29th, 1737, died June 8th, 1809, was an Englishman by birth, an American by adoption, and a Frenchman by decree. He is sadly the least honored of our founding fathers. Only six persons attended his simple funeral. Due to his embrace of deism and lifelong distrust of all hierarchically organized religion, no local church would allow his burial. His remains were interred under a walnut tree on a farm he owned in New Rochelle, New York. An English admirer later disinterred his remains in the hopes of a heroic reburial in Payne's native England, but he was never able to accomplish this. Tom Payne's bones disappeared from history after this man passed away. In 1992, the U.S. Congress passed a bill reserving land near the Capitol for a privately funded memorial to Payne, but the funds were never raised, and this too never came to pass. Yet, this was the man whose fiery track common sense is acknowledged as one of the main sources for popular support of the American Revolution. In terms of the percentage of the literate popula population who bought a copy, it still stands as the best-selling work in our history. John Adams, who grudgingly admitted Payne's contribution, nevertheless constantly attacked him and accused Payne of wishing for far too much democracy. <laughs> <laughs> to, to Adams' horror, Payne believed in a government that protected social and economic equality, no, oh, excuse me, a government that worked for the ordinary person, that regulated elite finance, and that made laws that promoted social and economic equality. For example, he is credited with being the first to propose an American national old age pension system. Also, the state of Pennsylvania adopted a constitution using Payne's ideas in 1776, becoming one of the first governments to allow at least some of the unproperty to vote. Loaded with elements of direct democracy, it also outlawed monopolies and debtor imprisonment and allowed for revocation of the charters of corrupt banks. A narrowly defeated article was even proposed that stated, an enormous proportion of property vested in a few individuals is dangerous to the rights and destructive of the common happiness of mankind. And therefore, every free state hath a right by its laws to discourage the possession of such property. As the Occupy movement and many others have clearly articulated many of the problems that concern pain and the framers of the 1776 Pennsylvania Constitution are still with us today. However, it must be noted that this truly revolutionary Pennsylvania Constitution was overturned in 1790 by frightened financial interests and their various conservative allies. It was largely dismissed in later years by mainstream historians and political scientists as an unwise radical experiment. Now we can see why the narratives of the powers that be in this country have not been kind to the memory of Tom Paine. As a result, I sense a deep kinship between Paine's convictions and the ideals of Occupy, Black Lives Matter, and the climate and environmental justice movements. They are certainly facing the same fear-driven attacks from the powers that be. And so, while John Adams' shade is probably mutter, muttering a horrified good God in response to these contemporary social movements, the ghost of Tom Paine will always be down there in the encampments, joining in the marches, blogging on the internet, and wherever else these movements may go, taking it all in happily, knowing that he now has a multitude of kindred spirits in this new age. Wow.
updated it from uh, before. Scoring the same points there. Um, I think it's time for the awards, and they actually found that we're not tied in anymore. Um, they were all fine, but I said All right, so are you going to start with the first person there? We're doing the alphabetically by the next name. By Armstrong Temple. Nancy Armstrong Temple is our first uh, person in the Carl. Uh, husband and children are receiving this award for her. Um, uh, you want to say anything about that? Yes. Why? Okay. Um, well, I was awarded on, on this day in um, Fellowship Hall, January 29th, in honor of the 279th birthday. And why we are giving it to Nancy Armstrong Temple, Carl, Lula, Annabelle, uh, for, for her educational work with children. And of course, we should say also being a good mother and partner. Uh, for your, her stalwart commitment to peace through justice, for her efforts at conflict resolution, for her steadfast engagement in Black Lives Matter, most profound movements ongoingly from the tradition of Tom Paine to expand the democracy, and for your, uh, Nancy's dedication to and practice of Unitarian Universalist principles. We recognize Nancy as being truly in the living tradition and the shining spirit of Tom Paine. We'll give that to Carl.
Nancy's quite an activist around here uh, with the fellowship too, and uh, she's got a website you can check out. Dance out loud. So look that up. Let's see who's next. Hey, you know what? You guys are supposed to get a book, a Tom Payne book, and you're supposed to get a uh, CD of a two a two CD set by Rob Johnson and. Uh, Leon Rosselson and Rob Johnson was just in the Bay Area. All the songs are about Tom Payne. It's called The Liberty Tree. So we, we're really going to have you singing Tom Payne songs all year long. You're going to get the awards. You'll have to share them with your friends. Get them to know this history because we need American revolutionary history to change things in this country. And we do need a revolution. Let's see who's next up on our program. I think we have it. Kelly Hammond. Okay, don't forget to get them. You can get a t-shirt for your size back there too. If anybody else wants to uh, help with the Berkeley Fellowship on the map, you can wear that. It says Social Justice in the Heart of Berkeley. That includes you. We have a, uh, we have a YouTube project of this a documentary. So if you're at home, you're looking for a documentary. We've got a whole Tom Lane 2020 videos about Tom Payne and the Tom Payne documentary playlist. So, um, who's ready to read this award to her? Step up to the mic? Okay, here's one. That's all right, I got it here. Uh, this is to Kelly Hammerman. Uh, we're going to say, for your neighborhood activism to help ordinary citizens preserve their homes and to have their voices be heard. These are all strong principles of pain, of course. For your writing and research, probably no one in these past, how many years, Paul? Well, we're talking about 16 months now, in my, in my memory, but it goes on for many, many years before that. Can you use the microphone, please? Oh, sorry. I'm just saying, uh, the latest struggle goes on for about 14 months, but before that, many, many years of activism on the port, on the part of uh, Kelly Hammerman in, in locally based uh, uh, activism. So reading all of these, I mean, you must admit you've probably read thousands of pages of Berkeley government. <laughs> so this is all about accountability and all this. It's for your writing and research to keep local government accountable for your use of your art to build participatory democracy, for co-founding the Sustainable Berkeley Coalition and the Save Shattuck Cinema Group, and also for your efforts in health and housing rights. Um, Kelly has a great history of Kaiser Pediatrics. <laughs> and you know, this is all on behalf of those system systemically deprived. We recognize you as being truly in the living tradition and the shining spirit of Tom Payne. I'm going to turn this over to my friend Paul, but also I thought we had a sentence in here about not, you know, not just keeping local government accountable, but accountable, but also challenging the, you know, the, the legal... The lawsuit! The lawsuit! Yes, the lawsuit! Maybe I'll say a few words about that. Yeah. Now, I'm going to hand this to you, Paul, and then I'm going to hand you this. Uh, there, well, there's not a huge amount to add. Well, there's multitudes to add to that, but we won't go on and on. I, 16 months ago, the Save Shattuck Cinema... It's better where it was. 16 months ago, the Save Shattuck Cinema Committee started uh, at a time when people were uh, very discouraged by the failure of Measure R. Uh, Kelly jumped in there right at the beginning. I had the, I had the honor of bringing the first groups together and started working like a demon. Became the chair of the organization and from that point on started attending city meetings. She gradually, as she formed the Berkeley Sustainable Coalition, worked her way up to going to sometimes three and four meetings a week to keep on up, keep up on what was go what's going on with Berkeley politics and doing uh, 
a, 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 a email entries to a large number of people. How many people here were involved with Save Shadow Cinemas and signed petitions that came out to the city council during that time? What we brought, what we brought in eventually was over thousands of Berkeley citizens who, who form the core of the new Berkeley arising again from what I would consider some of its ashes at this point. We don't just have a small group of activists left in Berkeley anymore. And we, 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 have, we can thank Kelly and many other people who rallied behind her and with her for that, that today. So I see, I see people twinkling over there. I love it. Thank you very much. And thank you, Kelly, for being a part of that. Thank you, Paul. Um, some days I'm not sure whether I should thank Paul. <laughs> um, there were two people who were instrumental in getting me started with this. Um, my neighbor, Aaron Deem, who I had met through an anti-fracking rally, knocked on my door on November 12th, 2014, and asked me if I would go to a meeting with her the next night. And that was the Zoning Adjustment Board meeting. And that was my first introduction to Harold Way and really my first introduction to uh, land use, zoning, and all of the things that um, happen with these new big buildings. And so I went to that meeting and uh, about a week and a half later, Paul invited me to come to Save Shattuck Cinemas and I met with that group and I guess we, were, we just really got started. We were on our way and then Aaron took me over to Save Shattuck Cinemas and I started getting petition signatures and there was just never any going back. Um, we just kept going and I, and as I looked along in this, I thought, you know, I, I really, I went to the Zoning Adjustment Board, but then I found I needed to go to the Design Review Committee. And then I found I needed to go to the Landmarks Preservation Committee. And then I needed to go to the Planning Committee. And I needed to go to um, school board meetings. Um, and city council meetings. And so when Paul said three to four meetings a week, and then of course there were the community meetings and the organizing meetings, and uh, actually uh, three to four meetings was a light week. Yeah. That, was a, that was really a light week. Yeah, yeah. And, then, um, and then of course there's all the documents to read. And as many of you know, we really fought hard and we did an appeal um, against this building and we lost that appeal with our city council. We, every time we would go up against a board or a commission, there, you know, sometimes we'd make a little game and it's like being on a roller coaster. You get a little win and you think, wow, boy, did we do it. We got an extension on the environmental impact report. That's never happened before. And we're just elated. And then you turn around, and the next minute, the sledgehammer is coming down, and it's like, oh crap, they got the best of us again. And then we we just pick up and, and we keep going. And it, it's so amazing the spirit that comes from our community. Um, this Monday, I'm in the lawsuit now. I filed a lawsuit. Now I'm not an attorney. We do, uh, we have an attorney that is advising us but hasn't come on board yet. I call him, we talk, he tells me what to do. Um, he reads the drafts that I write and puts me in the direction. It's, um, it's kind of scary. I'm hoping that he'll take us on as a full-time case, but that's going to cost a ton of money. So it is, um, you know, it's a big commitment. It carries a lot of risk, but this development, Harold Way, that's going to take out our Shattuck Cinemas is probably the worst thing that's come along in our city. And if we can't win on this one, then um, I don't think we can win on anything. I, I hate to even say that, but I really see it as, as um, a pivotal uh, protest. And so if we, if we get a good win here, it will make a huge difference 
uh, for other things that come along that really threaten our communities, our neighborhoods, and end up in displacement of the people we care and love about, love in our city.